Uh, well, it is January. You know what that means. It means it's the month of Dragon Ball Z Kakarot's release. And so I decided to buy the game, of course, but I bought it off of eBay from a seller who promised that he would actually include a Dragon Ball Z VHS tape or some kind of Dragon Ball VHS tape. So, I mean, I assume it's probably one I already own. I mean, I have an immense collection. I own it all. But, you know, we'll see what it is. So in here, I have, oh, look, my copy of Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. So that's nice. I'm glad I could finally play the game. I can't wait to play it probably after this. And inside, let's see what else we got. Again, it's probably just something I already own. Actually, it's a blank tape? What is this? Well, luckily I have my VCR right over there, and I have my good old computer right over here, and I can just hook them up, and I can figure out what's on this. Well, how come your legs are long and puny looking? You sure you're not some kind of stork? I'm not a bird, I'm a girl. Something you'll figure out in a couple of years. Call him the turtle hermit. He's one of those wise old Zen master types that live all alone in a dinky hut. Supposed to be a big martial arts expert. So, Goku's voice is different. All the characters' voices are different. So this is not, at least I don't think, this is Funimation. Could this, maybe this is Harmony Gold. You know what, I think that's what this is. This is probably an old Harmony Gold DHS tape. That's what seems to make the most sense to me. Oh, oh hold on, I'm getting a call, hold on. Hey, it's Geekdom. Hey, what's up, buddy? I felt a great disturbance in the force, aka my misinformation meter went off. No, this is not the Harmony Gold dub actually, but it does have ties into the Harmony Gold dub. This was actually a very rare promotional dub released by Ocean Studios and Funimation at some point in 1995 and is extremely rare. And the reason for that is because it's the first Dragon Ball production ever that was done outside of Harmony Gold. Funimation had at some point gotten the license for Dragon Ball from Harmony Gold and this was their first project ever. And because they had almost no knowledge of what Dragon Ball was, they used the Harmony Gold scripts and names, which is why you have Goku being referred to as Zero only in this version, just like he was in the Harmony Gold dub, and never again in Dragon Ball would he ever be referred to as Zero in any official dub. I guess that makes a lot of sense. I really appreciate you giving me the information. Hey, uh, by any chance, did you want to stick around? Maybe be in the review? I wish I could, but I can. I'm going to be going out with Toriyama to play putt-putt golf tonight. But I'll let you know who wins. Spoiler, it won't be me. See you soon. Well, that does sound like a lot of fun. I mean, I know I wouldn't want to miss out playing golf with Toriyama. All right, well, I guess let's go ahead and get into the review. So we start off with the narrator explaining the history of the Dragon Balls. Before land, before water, there existed only fire. A fire that rages to this day, deep within the core of the earth. It is said that within this heart of fire, there dwells an eternal dragon. Wait, it said before land, but that's clearly land right there. And it's surrounded by water, so the narrator's just a liar, I guess? Then, once more the balls will be scattered to the four winds, and the dragon beast will return to his fiery lair to sleep in peace, until another brave or foolish soul rediscovers the balls and tries to bring them together again. Aw, oh, yeah, here we go, the Dragon Ball intro. It's so good. Evil lives around you, keep on searching, but beware. Zero, he's a hero. Oh, this is what Geekdom told me about. Zero, huh? Yeah, so it's not just Zero that they changed the name to. Uh, Lena is Bulma, despite wearing her Bulma shirt. Uh, Chester is Oolong. Sadaki is Yamcha, just to name a few. We are now in a peaceful land that is being scavenged for treasures lying under the ground by the once kind and noble king, Guru Man. Helpless farmers can only watch in dismay as the king's stormtroopers destroy their homes and plow under their fields to mine the riches buried below. Wait, wait, wait. Stormtroopers? 
So this is how Palpatine came back in Rise of Skywalker, huh? They can't do this to us. Penny! Ah! Get that kid! Get him! Yeah, how dare you slingshot a pebble like that? Uh-uh. So the King's men have started in on kids. Hey, it's in the job description, so you better let go! Let go! <laughs> it's in the job description? Really? Uh, y yes, hi. I I'm here for the interview. Yeah. Ah, yes, yes. Have a seat. So we're looking for a soldier who's uh, hopefully going to end up defending our gold miners uh, from potential threats such as, uh, you know, maybe little children with slingshots or, uh, you know. That, that's great. I love kids. Oh, great, great. You're hired. Uh, the only thing, and really it's small, uh, is you, if they do get involved, you may have to, you know, just butt stroke the shit out of them. But, you know, that's it's semantics, really. That's just the small stuff. Uh... Sir, there's peasants interfering. So. One of the lambs wants to be alive. Here we meet Bongo, one of Gurumez's top men, as he tells the villagers that they're searching for the blood rubies. These rubies are highly valuable, but cursed. King Gurumez has turned into a monster and cannot satisfy his hunger and hopes collecting the Dragon Balls will fix everything. Such courage deserves a reward. Hey! <sighs> Bongo gets in a jeep with his partner, Pasta, as they head back to the kingdom. I could have taken him. I love this guy. I kind of wish he was a, a recurring character who just stuck around in the background and said this about, you know, all of the major bad villains of Dragon Ball Z and even Dragon Ball Super. But then I suppose humility is your lot with a mere 42,000 power level. I could have taken him. I could have taken him. It's over. I could have taken him. I'll show him. They're messing with the wrong kid. I actually would love it if this movie had nothing to do with Goku and the gang and was just about this girl going complete home alone on all their asses. Bongo and Pasta arrive at the castle where they inform King Gurumez that they have attained yet another Dragon Ball. Pasta tells Gurumez that there are others also searching for the Dragon Balls, but Gurumez just tells her to hurry up and get them, and he'll give her blood rubies as a reward. We now flash over to Mount Pows, where we are introduced to Zero. Man, it feels so weird calling him that. We also meet Lena, as she's on her way to get Zero's grandpa's Dragon Ball. She sees that Borgo and Pasta are also on their way there, but she ends up running into Zero. Literally. <laughs> Here we get the classic meeting we've all seen a bunch of times, but as this is a retelling, events are slightly different as we've been interrupted by Bongo and Pasta stealing the four-star Dragon Ball. In order to try to catch up to them, Lena uses one of her capsules to bring out a jet plane to catch up to them. They go at a gun war with each other until Pasta just brings out a bazooka. Bingo. Nothing compares to the sweet smell of victory. Okay, so if nothing compares, then why are you smelling a rose? Are you trying to compare? Are you trying to get the smell of victory out of your nose? Where did you even get a rose? Were you holding on to it just the whole time? Zero and Lena manage to land safely and decide to drive somewhere for the night. Meanwhile, we see the same girl from the beginning, 
Penny run into Chester, a mysterious shapeshifter, but she isn't having any of that. Oh, what kind help, of answer is that? Help me somebody, please, help me! She has that marksman slingshot, and apparently those small rocks can hurt anybody. Soldiers, giant demons, it, it clearly must have been Jiren's kryptonite. Zero gets out of the car to fight him, but he shapeshifts into a giant robot. Neat change, mister. What's in the bowl? Little runt soup. How would you like to be the runt? <laughs> what are you looking at? Chester decides to test Zero's strength and is quite surprised. <laughs> Give it your best shot. <laughs> what the fuck was that? That was like two completely different laughs, and the last one didn't even fit, like, at all. <laughs> Chester turns into a bat at an attempt to run away from Zero, but he catches up to him and he shows Zero his true form, a pig-like creature. Watch who you call odd. This is how I really look. Oh, sorry. Chester doesn't have time to chat, though, as he recognizes the area and begins to shriek out in terror. Look where we are. This is where he is. You know, him. <laughs> Who's him? Or does whatever that is. <laughs> Sadaki! The two are interrupted by the bandit Sadaki, and Chester tries to get Zero to take him down. Hurt you, Chester! Kid, think you can drop Sadaki? Uh-huh. I've seen what you can do, and you're definitely a contender. <laughs> you don't understand. I could have had class. I could have been a contender. I could have been somebody. Instead of a bum. <laughs> hey, Sadaki, you want to get to me, you gotta go through him. First I'll take care of him, then I'll send you to hog heaven. He's all yours, kid. How come you're such a coward all of a sudden? What do you mean, all of a sudden? I've pretty much been a coward all of my life. <laughs> well, I'm no coward, Hibachi, or whatever your name is. Okay, I don't know what's going up with the voice actor for Chester, but he's cracking me up. We are now thrown into a fight between Zero and Sadaki, as he's about to show Zero his secret technique. I'm a power of Why does he sound like the gold guy from DuckTales? Gold, 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 gold! Lena pulls up to find Zero, and Sadaki freaks out because he gets extremely nervous around women and falls face first off the cliff. He ends up breaking his tooth and freaks out. What happened to your tooth? What? Here, I'll show you. Ah! Now I'll never get a date! <laughs> Man, you can make so many memes off of this dub. Zero and Lena take Chester back to their capsule vehicle, and Penny explains to them that she is looking for Master Roshi to help bring her peace back to her home. And what were you doing wandering around so late at night, Penny? I'm sorry. I know I shouldn't have been out so late, but I'm heading south to find the island where the great Master Roshi lives. I just have to find him. Master Roshi? I've heard of him. They call him the Turtle Hermit. He's one of those wise old Zen master types that live all alone in a dinky hut. Supposed to be a big martial arts expert. Yeah? Sounds like someone I'd like to know. Well, come to think of it, we happen to be going south, Penny. Oh, please take me along. I'll teach Zero some table manners. Is this turtle guy cute? No. 
But he's the only one who can save my home, maybe the world. Sadaki overhears their conversation and decides to beat them to Master Roshi and attempts to mislead him into thinking that they're trying to steal his shell. So you've come here to kill me and steal my shell, have you? Well, I was warned of your coming. I'm not as feeble an opponent as I appear. I'll give you a chance to leave peacefully. But Master Roshi, you don't understand. We haven't come to hurt you. We've come to seek your help to fight our evil king. What? That's not what he said. I think you might be wrong about these guys. Ah, they're tricking you, you old coot. To find out who's really telling the truth, Roshi calls his flying Nimbus that only the pure of heart can ride. Huh? You're saying somebody can really ride on that? Oh, not just anybody. Only those who are truthful and pure in heart can fly upon this tiny cloud. It will not support those who are dishonest or are wicked in thought. Here, uh, let me show you. <laughs> Shouldn't have cheated on that crossword. Why does the turtle's voice sound like one of those text-to-speech computer voices? Shouldn't have cheated on the crossword. Let me try. Nimbus navigating. That clears up the mystery of who wasn't telling the truth. Zero is able to ride the Nimbus, so Roshi knows that they are telling the truth and gives Lena his Dragon Ball. Finally, the last two Dragon Balls. Lots the pickpocket missiles. But immediately, they're ambushed by Guru Metz's army to steal the final two Dragon Balls. They destroy Roshi's house, so he buffs up and fires his famous Kamehameha and destroys their submarine. Asks Roshi for help, but he pretty much cops out and just says that Zero will handle it. But I'm an old hermit, and to be honest, that kid with you is amazing. I've never seen anyone learn the Kamehameha so fast. The power of light dwells strongly within him, Penny. Really? Lena and Zero will help you. You have more than enough help to save your troubled land. They begin to head to Gurumez's palace, and his army already knows that they're there. They open fire in an attempt to take the final Dragon Ball. The gang splits up, as Zero goes to fight Bongo on the Nimbus, and Lena, Chester, and Penny try to take on the Jet Fighters, but they get shot out of the sky. That effect looked awful, like something out of the old Superman movies. Sadaki shows up wielding some badass nunchucks, and they find the room carrying all the blood rubies and steal as many as they can. Stop standing around, Putin's. Grab a bunch and let's go! Wait! That's not the way out, Master! Wait! They end up running into Lena and Penny as they've been using Chester to scare away any upcoming soldiers, but it looks like they both had the same idea, and they just end up scaring each other. Hmm? Here comes some more! Okay, Chester, let him have it! Brace yourselves! This is gonna be scary! <laughs> Wasn't scared! Me neither! Both groups are quickly ambushed by Pasta, who Sadaki attempts to fight until realizing it's a woman. <laughs> She throws a ton of grenades that cause the place to begin collapsing, and Sadaki saves Lena's life. You saved my 
my life. Are you okay? They finally meet back up with Zero as he blows Bongo through a wall that leads them to King Groovez. He can't stand the pain any longer and transforms completely into a monster that crushes Bongo. What a way to slim down. You know, that kind of made me chuckle just a little bit. Zero goes head to head with Gurumez, but his attempts seem futile. Lena notices the other six Dragon Balls are in his stomach and decides to throw the seventh in there also. Okay, so where to assume Gurumez died, right? Shenron appears and Penny makes her wish. Who is it that has brought together the seven balls and called me forth? Tell me your wish so that I may grant it in return to my fiery lair. Why are you all silent? Tell me your wish now. I wish my land was peaceful and beautiful again. So bad. The curse is lifted, oh, but I'm still real hungry. What's this? Mm, delicious! I've never had anything like it before. It's an apple. Incredible! It's so tasty. That's right, my king. One of the many things you almost wiped out of your kingdom. Daddy! I had no idea. I love how he's been the king over a village for years, but he's never even heard of an apple before. With Gurumez no longer under the influence of the blood rubies, and the kingdom being returned to normal, Lena and the gang celebrate as Zero rides the Nimbus off into the sky. <laughs> Bye, Nimbus away! And that was it, guys. So. It's cool to know that things out there other than the Funimation dub and even the Harmony Gold dub exist. So I'm glad I was able to introduce all of you guys out there to this really obscure, rare, and hard to find dub. Uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and play me some Kakarot and uh, enjoy the rest of my month. I will see you all next month in the next episode.